very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Voice of the Markets Vietnam Industry 4.0 Forum. My name is Lynn and I will be your host for today. We started in Indonesia and we round up this medley of forums in the land of fur, Vietnam. Now to move on, this forum is brought to you by Constellar Exhibitions, the organizer of the region's premier industry 4.0 event platform, Industrial Transformation Asia Pacific or ITEP in short. The platform is developed to support regional manufacturing industries and businesses in their digitalization and industrial transformation journeys. Today's Industry 4.0 Forum is part of a series of country-focused events and is designed to highlight key Industry 4.0 initiatives in Vietnam, promote understanding of the issues facing manufacturing businesses in the automotive, electrical, and electronics industries, food and beverage, medtech, logistics, as well as potential opportunities for collaboration. By now, we are all familiar with the impact of COVID-19 on global travel, with borders closed and businesses traveled grinding to a halt. We had to find new ways to build and strengthen relationships across borders. With our series of country-focused Industry 4.0 forums, we hope to encourage regional Industry 4.0 partners, industry members, supporting associations and public sector agencies to participate at ITAP happening on 22nd to 24th November 2021. To start off with today's forum, please join me in welcoming Mr. James Boy, Executive Director of Constellar Exhibitions to give his opening remarks. James, please. Thank you, Lailin. Good afternoon, everyone. It gives me Great pleasure, pleasure to host you this afternoon on behalf of my colleagues at Deutsche Messe and also at the Constella Exhibition for this uh, final league of our roadshow in Vietnam. I would like to first start by extending a warm welcome to Ms. Quinn, expert from the Department of Science and Technology, Vietnam Ministry of Industry and Trade, Mr. Tim Boon Phai, ST Microelectronics Asia Pacific, Mr. Le. Bosch Vietnam and Mr. Moore Vamos Born Vietnam and many of our esteemed speakers welcome to this uh, session as well. In addition, I'd like to mention the attendance of many companies and business leaders at today's forum, which reflects a very strong interest in the Vietnamese market. Now, we all know that Vietnam's economic priorities correspond greatly with the business interests, particularly in the manufacturing sector, where there has been a pivotal shift in production because of the trade war between US and China. Vietnam has embarked on economic reforms that we all recognize that will accelerate growth and open up new business opportunities. Now, this includes positive steps to improve the business environment and enhance support for companies. We therefore see foreign direct investment continue to flow into Vietnam. However, in today's challenging situation, companies are still trying their best to cope with the pandemic development. But notwithstanding this, we recognize that companies need to find new ways to survive, whether it's in Vietnam or the whole entire region. And I believe it is important for Vietnam to send a very strong and positive signal to current and future investors through your smooth and expedite resolution of the issues faced by many enterprises today in Vietnam. And today we like to hear about the implementation of Industry 4.0 strategies the opportunities Vietnam market could bring to many of the solution providers and companies who are interested to venture into Vietnam. So let's hear from the speakers later on when they discuss uh, these matters. So in my conclusion, I'd like to just extend an invitation to all of you to visit our Industry 4.0 Trade Fair. Industrial Transformation Asia Pacific, which will take place from 22nd to the 24th of November this year. We are making plans, in fact, working very hard to make these plans for all overseas visitors to join us physically at the event. And we will continue to share more information in the coming weeks on our website. And if you 
we are really interested to join us for this event, just feel free to reach out to any of us and we will get back to you providing the detailed information to you on a personal basis. So thank you for everyone for making time to attend this forum today. And I hope that you will find this valuable uh, for your business uh, consumption. So see you in November and thank you very much. Back to you, Lailin. Thank you, James, for that short but eloquent speech. I would like to offer my welcome as well to everyone who has joined us here today on this fine afternoon as we, also the representatives for Deutsche Messe in Malaysia, Myanmar, Singapore and Vietnam, together with Constella, worked tirelessly to highlight the reasons why Industry 400 is important, identify use cases, and join hands with many organizations, government agencies, and more to show you the way. James has succinctly elaborated on the reasons why you should actually be visiting ITEP this November. I would like to just add that coming from the perspective of actually working on the exhibition since the inception in 2018, we saw the passion and tenacity from all parties, whether service providers, end users, or government officials. It is time for us to also consider the fact that the pandemic has dealt us more than just an immediate implementation of digital transformation. It showed us that it is inevitable that we need to adopt Industry 4.0. We also need to see that innovation is important. Design thinking and looking towards the future is not just prudent, but a requirement. Survivability is never more crucial than now, and thus the series of industry forums are why it can shed more light. I would like to extend my thanks to Bosch Vietnam specifically for having worked with us so tirelessly in getting the speakers from the Ministry of Industry and Trade Vietnam, B. Brown, Ahaka Vietnam, and so graciously jointly hosting this with us too. I would also like to thank our speakers and an audience who so kindly agreed to spend your afternoon with us. Without further ado, I won't take too much of your time uh, because we have brought you a very high impact webinar that we've put together for you. So now we're going to bring you to the next section in conversation series of the forum. We're very proud to jointly do this with Bosch Vietnam, and we will be talking about the digital transformation trends in Vietnam through the government and industry lens. Together with Bosch Vietnam as your moderator, this segment aims to discuss and show you what those trends are. But first, let me introduce to you Mr. Le Hong Viet, Head of Drive and Control at Bosch Vietnam. He has 14 years of experience in the machinery and heavy industries and a proven track record as a business development expert and overlooks both the Vietnam and Cambodian markets for the Bosch drive and control technologies. Joining him in the conversation are Ms. Queen and Mr. Vamos. Over to you, Mr. Viet. Thank you, Lailin, for the short introductions. And good afternoon and welcome also on my behalf as well. Again, my name is Viet Le. Uh, I'm a director of Bosch Rochot in Vietnam and I will be your moderator in uh, today's panel discussions. In today's discussion, we will touch upon the digital transformation. And with us, we have two special guests, as Lailin already introduced. Uh, Ms. Yung Hoon Quinn, she will from the government side. She will be representing the Department of Science and Technology, which is under the Ministry of Industry and Trade. She will share with us what does the government think about digital transformations. And our second guest here, we have Mr. Mor Vamos, a chief operation officer at B. Brown, a German medical and pharmaceutical device company. Mr. Vamos will shed some lights regarding the digital transformation from a private company perspective. As we all know that science, technology and the fourth industrial revolution are happening very fast and that they are the factors for the competitiveness for the companies and countries. In today's dialogue, let's first explore how Vietnam will prepare for the digital transformation. Ms. Quinn, would you like to share with us what does the Vietnam government think of the digital transformations? Thank you very much for your introduction, Mr. Viet. Um, so from the Vietnamese government perspective, um, digital technologies are valuable vehicles to enhance the realization of many of our development goals. These goals are for stability, prosperity, safety, inclusivity, as well as the drive for innovation and continuous improvement. So when we bring in the digital aspect, the more specific visions as articulated in decision 749 by the prime minister in 2020 include three facets. 
um, digital government, which is looking forward to improve capacity and efficiency, digital economy development, and improving competitive advantages, and digital society, especially reducing the gap in accessibility to digital technologies. Now, from the viewpoint of a developing country with a modernizing industry, we can imagine that in order to work towards the goals, there is the need for long-term and fundamental solutions. If we are to divide the solution of decision 749 into groups, there are six of them from the government point of view. The first being raising awareness and provide useful channels of information exchange. Secondly, adapting laws and policies to the fast changing nature of the digital world. And uh, thirdly, the government will actively promote the development of infrastructure and serve digital technology. The three other groups are the development of platforms and databases for social services, the ensuring of cyber security, and the continuous outreaches and collaboration with foreign institutions. Um, going a little deeper, Looking from the vantage point of the industrial manufacturing sector, the Ministry of Industry and Trade is also building the new national program for supporting digital transformation in industrial and commercial enterprises based on these four goals. Um, th this program will introduce very specific incentives for manufacturers, for consulting organization, and for R&D institution to actively participate in the transformation of the sector. Raising awareness as well as in-depth education continue to be important, especially among enterprises with the shape and technical personnel. We also expect to continue supporting applied research and innovation, especially those that boost collaborations and technology transfer. With these approaches, um, our specific vision is that in the coming years, a significant number of enterprises who have systematic understanding about digital transformation, have good access to strategic consulting services for their transformation journey, and with government support will have successful investment that can serve as study cases for digital transformation for other enterprises. Thank you, Ms. Quinn, for this insight. We can hear that the uh, Ministry of Industry and Trade are busy building a national program to support uh, this whole journey. What about all those challenges? Uh, from the perspective of a policymaker, what kind of difficulties and challenges can you think of when implementing the digitalization plan? Mm, so our ministry have been engaging in Industry 4.0 for quite a number of years now. Uh, we have done both formal studies and field works. And these have shown that Vietnamese manufacturers generally need a lot of preparation before they are ready for full flash digital transformation. Um, most companies need to optimize and standardize their processes before going digital. And most companies that have already gone digital have only done so in certain simple silo tasks. So there is little connection or meaningful data available yet for analysis. At the same time, to bring these mostly analog systems into digitized stage and then digitalized stage, companies will need to create training programs that bring together the employers and the employees under the same goals. Um, so make sure that everyone will help each other overcome inertia, language barrier, technical difficulties, cultural difference, etc. Finally, from our perspective, it can be seen quite clearly that um, one reason support from policymakers is still important for industrial sectors in Vietnam is that these sectors have yet to have strong self-efficient ecosystem that can fully satisfy their demands in creating commercial quality standards, technical consulting or collaboration for research and development. So the challenges that policymakers need to take into account are based directly on the difficulties that manufacturers have been facing such as the house of technology upgrading, the house of personnel upskilling, and the strengthening of professional network and capacity. Now, taking that into a higher level, the policies that we build will address the challenges by driving the sectors and supply chains to upgrade to a more leveled and also more advanced playing field. Many of the policies will continue to focus on de developing new technologies and capacities. Um, but more notably, a significant number will focus on network growing, outreaches, and global collaborations. We are also actively looking for opportunities to work with development and technical organizations to study the Vietnamese prospects in digital transformation 
and in policy making. Thank you again, Ms. Quinn. It was a very clear message from you that the digital transformation is a long-term vision and perspective, uh, which requires the close collaboration between business sectors and the policy maker. Now let's hear from the business side about the journey of the digital transformations in Vietnam. Uh, Mr. Mo Vamos, a Chief Operations Officer at the B Brown, could you please tell us what does the digital transformation really mean for B Brown and how does B Brown start with the digital transformations? Yes, thank you, Mr. Viet. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, I would like to give you a short insight how B Brown, respectively, how B Brown Vietnam is, is um, navigating through the digitalization um, evolution. Uh, industrial evolution. Uh, as you know, maybe uh, Vibro in Vietnam has two manufacturing plants in Hanoi. One is a medical device manufacturing facility, which you can see on the slide. And another one is for the pharmaceuticals. With regard to digitalization, next slide, please. Um, we collected six major aspect, aspects. Next slide, please. Um, here you can see the six aspects. We, we thought that those are important and, um, and can be maybe useful also for, for other companies. The first is availability and accessibility. On the left side in purple, you see the current status, let's say the analog world. And on the right side, you see the green with green, the, the future state after digitalization. So with regard to availability and accessibility, um, what we um, are thinking of is that currently we are offline and pretty much limited with regard to, to data accessibility and, um, and, uh, and reports um, creation. And with digitalization, with, with an online world, with our PCs, with, with our mobile phones, tablets, we, are, we will be able to access the data 24-7. The second major aspect is the strategy deployment and management. Currently, although we are also a global company and we have global standards, but uh, we are a little bit single organization unit driven. And with digitalization with Industry 4.0, we will have fully transparent procedures, communication ways, and uh, also the strategic uh, KPI deployments decisions can be done much more effectively and more, much more quick as well. The third key aspect is standardization and harmonization. Uh, for us, it's very important to, to manufacture uh, everywhere in the world with the same and with the best quality. And this is why standardization and harmonization is extremely important for us. And digitalization is also uh, very, very useful in, in these aspects as well, if you are talking about global SOPs, guidelines, and those implementation. The fourth is intelligent connecting. Currently, we have a shop floor management system at we in Vietnam. Uh, we are doing it on a paper base. And in the future, we would like to digitalize also the shop floor management. And for this, we, we need to have intelligent uh, connection with workflows, reports, analysis, and to involve the team, involve every employee from all the levels. Number five is process analysis. Process analysis is currently done manually, takes a lot of time, and uh, sometimes also uh, yeah, there is a lot of waste in, in data analysis. And with digitalization, with uh, specific tools, applications, softwares, we can have a much more effective, intelligent data analysis, which will lead us to, to a much more effective improvement of our productive KPIs as well. The, the sixth, the last one, single source of truth. With that, we mean that currently we have sometimes, not always, but sometimes we can have heterogeneous uh, uh, data quality. That means that due to the fact that we are generating the data manually, we have access spreadsheets, um, several locations, multiple locations, and with, uh, with through digitalization, through the cloud-based storage uh, and direct access from for everybody, we can have a much more reliable and and uh, much better data quality for further improvements. 
why we are doing it. Uh, this is, uh, everybody can ask these questions why we are doing currently digitalization. And uh, the one uh, important question for us is to, uh, to, to become more efficient, to become better in the future and now as well. So uh, digitalization means for us to, to have better tools and more efficient tools in, in data acquisition, uh, data mining, visualization, analysis, process analysis. And by that, we can have a much more faster reaction and uh, high impact improvement on our processes. And at the end, we can shape our, our manufacturing environment in a, in a much better way. Next slide, please. Here you can see the digital performance management system of Vibro and Vietnam. In stage one, you can see our main uh, manufacturing processes. We are a plastic manufacturing um, process oriented uh, company, although we are a healthcare company, but uh, in the medical device factory, we have classic plastic manufacturing operations, extrusion, injection molding, end assembly, packaging, and sterilization. So the full value chain uh, in this industry. And what we would like to do and what we are going to do is that we will implement a digitalized so-called overall equipment effectiveness improvement, which means that we will have an interface between our equipment machines, um, between the machines and, and, and our system, our digitalized system. And by that connecting all the machines into one system, we will have a digital overview. We can get data out of the machines. With smart root cause analysis, we will be able to tackle the, the OE uh, reducing factors, the wastes, and, and, and the, all the things we don't need in the process, we can eliminate much more faster and in a much effective way. In the second stage, uh, we are going to implement the so-called autonomous production planning system. That means that once the customer is ordering a product from us, the whole production planning system will be done automatically, autonomously. Here you can see with the purple arrows that uh, the ordering process goes through from the end, from the sterilization until extrusion. And when the extrusion finish its own process for the specific order, it will give the feedback to the next subsequent process. And at the end, the customer will receive the, the product in time uh, and quality as expected. So, and this will save a lot of um, time and effort for us. And uh, by that, we can, we can be much more lean and improve our Kaizen processes. Thank you very much. This uh, would be the, my answer to the first question. Thank you, Mr. Viet. Thank you, Mr. Vamos, for this insightful. I think it will be very useful for, for some of us. I would like to ask you the same question, Mr. Vamos, that I asked uh, Ms. Quinn, that did you face any difficulties or challenges doing your implementations or your journey of uh, uh, the digitalizations? The answer is yes, and uh, I will show you the details in my slide. So we collected, if you could show my slide, I would appreciate it. Next one, please. Thank you. So here we collected some um, yeah, difficulties, I would rather say challenges in the digital transformation because changing to industry 4.0 and, and to turn an analog, more or less analog factory into a digitalized factory is always a challenge. Um, I just uh, put some key points here together. First one is mix up of aged and new equipment. So I mean that, uh, for example, an injection molding machine can be 10 years old, 15 years old, and also can be a brand new one. Of course, if we have a brand new machine, the integration of the machine in the digitalized environment the ecosystem is much easier. But uh, once we have an, an aged machine and we would like to integrate that machine into the same system, this will give us challenges and uh, we might need to modify the machine and find a specific solution for it. The second is the flexibility. With flexibility, I mean that uh, nowadays the digitalization and, um, and the improvement of the IT equipments are tremendously fast. So this we can see on our cell phones, on our operational system, on our laptops. Uh, basically every week we receive a new update. 
So once we commit ourselves to a system, we might uh, miss a chance to, to, to get uh, the benefits from different systems developing maybe in, in a better way. So this is what I mean with flexibility. So of course, we, we cannot jump from system A to system B from one day to another. That's why if, uh, the, if we decide ourselves which system we choose for digitalization, factory digitalization, this has to be planned very, very carefully. The third point is uh, with regard to investment and benefit. Digitalization is not for free. It costs um, a lot of money. It's quite expensive. So uh, extremely important to run return on investment calculations and see the real potential and benefit of the digitalization. So we are also not just doing it for fun and uh, that we would like to have screens on the shop floor and, uh, and make it colorful. At the end, we would like to have um, a better uh, process out of it, which will generate um, more profit for us. The last point is the training know-how. It is um, a challenge and also a task for us to train our employees from uh, all the levels, give them, provide the necessary trainings, improve the know-how because the digitalized world, world applications, softwares uh, requires specific, um, specific knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vamos. Yeah. I'm, su I'm sure that when uh, we're adopting the, these digital transformations, Organizations like you must deal with several issues, which require sometimes uh, strong support from the government, such as when it comes to uh, data protection or cybersecurity. Uh, Ms. Quinn, I would like to ask you as, as a policymaker, which kind of policy or programs that the government could implement to support the, the digital transformation in the business sectors? Okay, so um, if we look at digital transformation as a stage of growth, for businesses, then some of the first policies that will be implemented should be standards and regulations on new technological applications, such as policies on cybersecurity, data collection and usage, new models of digital business, etc. This will provide the sectors with better definition, better regulation, and a clearer space for development. Uh, sandbox testing for policy is also a suitable approach so as to improve time efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, at the same time, there will be resources and incentives for companies and professionals to engage in digital transformation. In the case of our program, we look forward to developing more policies and financial incentives that favor technology upgrade and innovation, and that allows institutions to better mobilize resources and co to collaborate. A significant part of the program will also focus on building capacity and readiness, such as creating in-depth training programs for consultants, for business leadership, and for technical personnel in strategic digital transformation. Um, building assessment tools to help companies understand themselves and where they are in relation to competitors. Uh, continuing to roll out programs that help business optimize and standardize their processes in preparation for going digital and investing and co-investing in technology transfer and development of digital technologies, digital infrastructure, platforms, database, and the service sectors. So here I would like to uh, emphasize one more time on the matter of boosting the e All of the possible tools that I have mentioned will have a common underlying element of encouraging connectivity and sharing, especially horizontal sharing from business to business because one of the most powerful potentials of digital transformation in manufacturing is creating the connection along the supply chain that would control quality throughout the product life cycle and is a two-way feedback line from the material provider all the way to the final consumer. In order to have a strong competitive companies and sector in the digital age, then sharing and connectivity will need to be a key focus what we as a government body is also looking forward to is creating international collaborations to assist this process. Um, we hope that through venues such as ITAP, um, enterprises and organizations interested in participating in such kind of activities will know of our vision and efforts and will reach out to us in time. Thank you, Ms. Win, for this insight sharing again. Uh, Mr. Vamos, then I will have my last question for you. 
In your view, would you mind to give us all the audience here three recommendations and one lesson learned to avoid when embarking on the shifting to the digital transformations? Absolutely, Mr. Ria. So let's see the slide. Yes, thank you. Yeah, three recommendations. As I said earlier, my recommendations are a little bit linked to also to the challenges. And the first is to, to optimize and standardize uh, the processes before doing digitalization. That means that um, we have to take away the known value added activities and uh, the waste, the muda out of our system before we are doing digitalization. Otherwise, we will simply multiply also the waste and non value added activities we have currently in our system. The second is with regard to investment uh, uh, and then return on investment calculation. So we, we, have, to, uh, we have to know the, the benefit of the digitalization project before we start investing in it. Um, and another recommendation is that we have to also invest not only in uh, assets, applications, and solutions, but also may, uh, we have to invest also in know-how of our employees and train them to be able to handle and manage the digitalized solutions. One mistake, respectively, not it's not a mistake; it is a uh, lessons learned. Is that, for example, once we have chosen a digitalized environment. And uh, in between the company IT security or policy changes, then um, this can jeopardize the further rollout of the digitalized environment. So I would like to emphasize here that uh, we should not only focus on our own departments in terms of digitalization, but also we have to closely work together with also the, the indirect departments like IT to make sure that all the IT security policies uh, uh, directives are in line and our chosen digitalized environment fit into, into this in order to avoid the roots at the end. Thank you very much, Mr. Viet. Thank you, Robert Lamos. We have uh, several questions from our audience here. I just uh, picked a few of them. Uh, the first question I think is uh, uh, addressing to you, uh, Mr. Lamos. Uh, Peter is from uh, Chin Lu Su, look at in Vietnam, he's saying like, he's asking like, is there any reason uh, why B Brown has not been adapting digitalization earlier in Vietnam besides financial investment? Everything has its uh, time and uh, digitalization has also its time. Uh, we, we, we use, let's say it's, uh, don't misunderstand, but we, we used also the, the current circumstances, and I mean now the COVID-19, to, to speed up the digitalization, because uh, maybe also you face the same at Bosch, but sometimes we need experts, sometimes we need um, uh, colleagues from abroad, from Europe, from different countries to come to Vietnam and to, to help us. And in the analog world, we cannot do that, we cannot facilitate it. So we have to uh, speed up the rollout of the digitalization to, 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 to be a little bit also to stand alone, uh, more reliable with our know-how uh, to avoid any hiccups or, or operational interruptions. Thank you, Mr. Vamos. Then another question is for Ms. Quinn, um, uh, new from Hex IoT from Malaysia. He is asking, uh, if Vietnam is now open for foreign company like us to be involved in digital transformation in Vietnam to exchange ideas and technology developments? If yes, what kind of agency and organizations are we in contact? Mm -hmm. Ms. Quinn, do you have any, any recommendation comments for, for New? Mm -hmm. So hello, New. Um, my, uh, my answer to you, I guess you have two points. First, uh, is Vietnam open to employment for overseas companies? The answer is yes, and especially if you would like to contribute to the standard, con stand the construction of standards, um, then uh, you are especially welcome because we are looking to build um, a digital society that can harmonize with international standards. Now, um, 
on the other hand, the question is of which agency to contact. Uh, right now, we have all, pretty much all of the government bodies are very engaged in digital transformation, but from very different perspectives and sectors. So to be honest, you will have to identify which uh, sector you would like to impact first. And then you, uh, you should contact uh, the, the relevant government body for that sector so that they should be able to provide you with the information of which policy is in place and which policy is going to be developed in the, in the short term run. Thank you, Ms. Quinn, for your reply. I hope this will uh, satisfy uh, new, your questions. Unfortunately, due to a sort of a time, I would like to close this meeting. And we still have other questions, but they're more uh, technicality questions for B. Brown, which I think uh, Mr. Bamos is more than happy to answer them later by email. Absolutely. Thank you for every time for your listening, and thank you for our panelist uh, speaker for today. Thank you. Thank you as well. Thank you, Mr. Ved and panelists for having shared with us insightful tips and trends moving the Vietnamese agenda in Industry 4.0. I certainly learned a lot and we hope you have too. I'm sure the questions that you have posed are of utmost importance, so do not worry, they will be able to attempt to answer you in due time. But we certainly hope that the audience was able to take away some information and gain knowledge in how you can tap into the government's efforts and derive some ideas from B Brown's journey into Industry 4.0. Now we go to the keynote with Mr. Tin Bun Fry from ST Microelectronics. He represents our event partner, Asia Pacific, and will be sharing on how semiconductor innovations are fundamentally enabling key industry trends in the region. Um, Bun Fry is ST Microelectronics MCU and MPU Marketing and Applications Manager for ASEAN and India since 2010 and brings extensive experience in automotive embedded software engineering. Over to you, Bunfai. Okay, thank you, Lai Ying. Um, xin chào. Um, hi everyone. Um, my name is Bunfai. So Tin is actually my uh, family name. Okay, so, okay. And I'm the MCU and MPU marketing and applications uh, manager for ASEAN and India. So based in SE Microelectronics, Singapore. So um, you're, I've actually been to Vietnam multiple times before the COVID. So I, uh, if you're using SD, SDM uh, Micro, especially the MCU, you're probably uh, familiar with me. You might have seen me before. So it's rather unfortunate that the situation today still prevents me from meeting all of you in, in person. And hopefully the circumstances will be better for uh, very soon. Okay. I'm going to talk to you today about how innovations in semiconductor are enabling key electronic industry trends such as uh, smart mobility, power and energy, and IoT and 5G. Okay? Uh, especially the IoT, um, I find exceptionally uh, relevant for the, for the uh, Vietnam market. Okay? I also discuss how these uh, innovations help electronic system developers address the corresponding challenges and opportunities. So I'll be using SD Micro to kickstart the appreciation of uh, today's discussion. Okay, uh, next. Okay, uh, briefly, ST, is a, ST Micro is a technology company. We are an independent semiconductor manufacturer among the largest chip making companies in the world. Okay, uh, our 46,000 employees of whom more than 8,000 work in R&D to so create and make technology to serve the need of our broad customer base. Uh, we work with more than 100 thousand plus customers, um, many of them in Vietnam of course, okay, and thousands of partners uh, worldwide to design and build product solutions and ecosystems that address the challenges and opportunities and the need to support a more sustainable world of course. We master the semiconductor supply chain okay, with uh, state-of-the-art manufacturing capabilities around the globe uh, for front-end and back-end production. So we are also a company committed to sustainability and responsible business practices. Um, and we have a long history of action and achievement in this area. Okay, next. Okay, so long-term strategic enablers for electronics, electronics like uh, ST Micro. So our investments are guided by long-term strategic enablers. So we see as key for the industry. industry. Uh, these enablers are basically smart mobility, Okay, the, the first um, 
the item on the left. Okay, for us, this is about car manufacturers uh, making cars driving smarter, safer, sorry, uh, greener and more connected for everyone. Okay, and then the second item, the second pillar, the power and energy. Key here is to enable okay the many uh, different branches of the industry to increase the efficiency, energy efficiency everywhere. Uh, and to support the increase in the use of renewable energy resources. And the third pillar, Internet of Things and 5G, in order to drive the pr proliferation of smart connected devices that underlie the IoT, we need to provide the right building blocks to connected device creators, uh, sensors, embedded processing solutions, connectivity, security, and power management, as well as tools and ecosystem to make the device and system development fast and easy. Okay, um, next. Okay, so the first uh, pillar, uh, smart mobility. Now let's briefly start with the first industry trend of smart mobility, but I will not focus so much on today, um, during today's uh, topic. Uh, this trend is the shift from traditional combustion engine, especially cars to smarter mobility solutions. Uh, basically with a uh, connected digital, electric vehicles and their supporting infrastructure, moving from a niche to a high volume globally. Okay. Smart mobility is key when it comes to man managing the traffic in densely packed urban areas, cities basically, reducing our reliance on fossil fuels, uh, curbing air pollution levels, as well as to lowering the number of road traffic accidents that occur. So through this, it will be possible to, for us to make a our increasingly overpopulated cities are much cleaner and safer places to be, as well as helping to shorten the amount of time each day that commuters have to spend in transit. So there are two key electronic trends associated with uh, smart mobility, as we see, uh, basically the digitization as well as the electrification. Okay, in which SD micro electronics, we are actually uh, strategically positioned to capture such rising trend. Okay, um, next slide. Okay. okay, now let's move uh, to the second industry trend, which is the need for much efficient energy and power across all devices and system and is key to address the increasing global energy demand while reducing environmental impacts. Okay, this is a combination of demand from all sectors, but in particular from industrial application. In fact, the, usually the um, industrial application tends to use up a lot more energy uh, than consumer, of course. Also, as we become more dependent on the internet and cloud-based services, uh, the data center, okay, is, which is getting enormous, okay, um, continues to expand, adding further energy demands. Okay? Big improvements to the operational efficiency of infrastructure are needed. Okay? Upgrading distribution network and imp implementing smart grid technology. So therefore, we must clearly become more reliant on forms of renewable energy, such as wind turbine, photovoltaics, etc., rather than fossil fuels. Uh, substantial, substantial improvements to the operational efficiency levels of infrastructure are going to be needed with the upgrading of distribution network and extensive in implementation of smart grid technology. So how can the semiconductor industry help to address uh, these cha challenges? Okay, next. Okay, the main way we can help is by addressing the challenges that power system designers are facing. Okay? They want to make systems that have high efficiency to reduce overall power consumption, higher performance, better form factor, lower cost system costs, as well as the cost of ownership for the operation of the system. And of course, faster time to market, always high on the developer's uh, needs. Okay, next. Okay. There are a number of ways in which we can address each of these uh, individual needs. Okay. To achieve high efficiency, we need to reduce power losses throughout the system from individual components to overall system operation and control. For higher performance, we should increase the power system okay, that can, the system can handle and increase the speed of the operation. To build devices with better form factor, we can reduce system size through higher density components, smaller packaging, and heat sinks. Okay, as well. Um, to lower the system cost and cost of ownership for the operation of the system, we should reduce the cost of individual components, increase integration, reduce material space required for the final 
system. And to enable faster time to market, we need okay, to reduce design, testing, and industrialization effort with components optimized for applications, pre-integrated solutions, hardware, and tools, and software tools. Okay, next. So me being the MCU um, uh, champion in, in South Asia, um, so, um, and I'm glad that I have, you know, from SD, we have something to offer. So in the context of all points mentioned above, uh, such implementation couldn't be achieved without a good microcontroller. So just an elaboration of what, SD, um, what semiconductors, for example, a microcontroller, like this SDM32 G4, okay, can play a role in addressing all the above challenges. Okay, so um, for example, this um, SDM32 G4 can actually be used in motor control, um, digital switch mode power supply, which is actually the norm among all the key um, electronic um, power supply makers, uh, as well as a vehicle, uh, electric vehicle charging and so on and so forth, as well as the industrial PLC and so on. Okay, next. Okay, uh, so I will go through all the points, the fine bullet points that you see. So key features for targeted applications. So some target applications where system designers will find MCU, okay, microcontroller, like the SDM32 G4, uh, really, really useful here. So it can be used for the um, power supply, digital power supply for servers, okay, tel telcos and all these, they use a lot of um, uh, all these um, uh, data sensors, they need a lot of all these power supply, okay, efficient power supply, um, as well as EV charging, um, and then you have uh, drones, Okay, that makes things more you know smarter these days with uh, drones without so much of a manual work. Okay, and then the uh, whole appliances, um, as of course like uh, air condition and all these actually using the most uh, part of the uh, energy at home. Okay, and then as well as this industrial application uh, equipment for for servos and so on. Okay, next, and then. The third industry trend is Internet of Things and 5G. Okay. This trend is transforming every aspect of our life, okay. which I find that, um, in fact, every time I visit uh, Vietnam, this is the most uh, uh, frequent you know, um, inquiry coming from all the customers in Vietnam, especially the uh, IoT uh, um, designs and, and, and application. So where we work and where we live, the cars we drive, the objects we use, and so on. Okay. As well as the 5G technology will play a key role in enabling the spread of IoT devices and services thanks to improved data speeds, more efficient data transfer, and the low latency of the networks. Okay. So what are the challenges uh, that the creators of the billions of connected devices are facing today? Okay. Uh, next. As usual, uh, they want to have more computing power and memory available. This allows for more local autonomy for the processing nodes. So that's why you have uh, the term of uh, edge computing these days. Uh, low power connected devices often need to be battery operated, which means that every last microwatt needs to be squeezed out of the components at the system level. Sensors that can collect all the data uh, that are relevant for the application. Okay, uh, easy connectivity for embedded developers. Okay. Uh, are one of the challenges here in addressing the many standards, both wired and wireless. Okay, basically RF for what for the uh, wireless, of course. Security also increasing concern, as well as the need to able prototype, develop, and industrialize uh, their devices quickly and efficiently. Um, next. Okay. Oh, okay. I, time is almost up. Okay. Uh, so how do we address these challenges? Okay, in general, we always need to have uh, to need better performance for existing features, as well as to add on new features, of course, and functionality. And then uh, this performance increase can support improvement in the safety of devices to make them more reliable. We need increase com in can increase um, the computation core performance, add accelerators for graphics and AI, and more memory, as well as the lower power consumption. Okay. So that um, for battery operated application, it can be, um, you know, um, can still have efficient computing, okay, as well as the overall, the overall system optimization. We can actually provide various uh, types of sensors ranging from motion to vibration to environmental and imaging, 
and we can build in easy connectivity with multi protocol options and offer security in hardware as well. Okay, and last but not least, of course, the um, time to market, uh, you know, help developers to put these components easily and quickly, okay, for prototyping. Okay, um, next. So, okay, all this couldn't be achieved without a microcontroller. So um, this is just the SDM32 MCU and MPU portfolio. And if you see the ultra low power MCU, um, from SD, we have a, a very broad, lined up of um, ultra low power devices for all these IoT implementation. Okay. As well as the uh, SDM32 WL for LoRa Sigbox, as well as the WB for the BLE uh, 5.2, okay, under the wireless MCU. Okay, next. Okay, so, so uh, at the, um, sorry, at SD, we provide all the hardware building blocks that developers need to build their smart connected devices. So it includes a uh, various of uh, sensors, microcontrollers, wireless connectivity options, um, you know, both integrated into our microcontroller as well as standalone. And we also provide the key software building blocks, okay, associated with our hardware so that developers can quickly get it up and running um, on their application rather than getting, you know, um, the system uh to run okay and then this uh this includes the hardware extraction layer um, and middleware and sample application as well as uh same some packages we call function packs that are already assembling the required software blocks for some popular applications uh, example as i mentioned like the power con the uh, switchable power supply uh, motor control okay uh, sensorless uh, sensorless vector control motor control and so on and of course, some of the um, AI, uh, neural network, and uh, machine learning uh, function packs. Okay, uh, next, please. I think that should be the last slide. So with that, I would like to throw, close my presentation with a few uh, takeaways. As we have seen, innovation in semiconductor is essential for enabling key industry trends in electronics today, namely smart mobility, power and energy, uh, and IoT and 5G. So as this approach to innovation to support this industry trend is threefold, we make long-term investments in the fundamental technologies needed to support the trends. We target the specific markets and applications that can benefit from our te technology, and of course, which can drive the adoption of the technology. And last but not least, uh, we, we develop products and solutions that meet and exceed the needs and expectations of our customers and allow them to address their cha challenges and opportunities. Okay, so thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Bunpai, for the very great insight on how SD Microelectronics is helping to drive developments in our region and into our future.